What's going on guys? Kevin here from the sportsgeek.com and in this video I'm going to go over my DraftKings NFL Week 15 picks. Before we move on to Week 15, let's take a look back at Week 14. So on the left here we had some solid picks. I had the top stack of the week with Russell Wilson and Doug Baldwin both getting over 32 points. We had our cheap running back for Thursday night, David Johnson, put up 17 points. Jarvis Landry, 20.9 points on Monday night. Uh, Chiefs defense was a pretty solid pick with 14 points. And then on the right here, I had some busts as well. So one of my favorite quarterbacks was Winston, put up 13 points. Safari and Jenkins was a cheap tight end, but he only put up 6 points. Um, Olsen unfortunately got injured after putting up 8.2 points. Could have been a higher day for him. And then Travis Kelsey was my other tight end pick, and he only put up 4.8 points. And then on top of those solid picks on the left, I also emailed out some bonus picks, and those included some really high scorers this week. Odell Beckham Jr., uh, Brandon Marshall, Jordan Reed, Gary Barnage all had huge games. So if you're not signed up for my emails, make sure you do that. Just click on the lineup tool below in the YouTube description, and that will get you signed up for my weekly pick updates as well. So again, this week I had a lot of people emailing me, uh, telling me about their winnings. So congrats to these guys. We had uh, Bodie, or I believe his name is Steven. He cashed in all six lineups. He entered for about $200. John won over a grand. Congrats, John. Kale said I helped him win over $150 again. Congrats, Kale. And then we had uh, Tyler. He said he won $10,000 this week on a $9 buy-in. So that is crazy. Congrats to Tyler. Jermaine uh, finished the weekend out with a little over $2,000 in winning. So congrats, Jermaine. Uh, Christopher hit fourth place for $266. So congrats, Chris. Congrats to all you guys. If you emailed me and I didn't include your email, congrats to you as well. And if you didn't email me, I hope that your name is on this list next week. All right, so let's also take a look at the week 14 Millionaire Maker uh, winning lineup. So as you can see here, pretty crazy that they had uh, Russell Wilson and Doug Baldwin stack. That was my number one stack last week, and that stack ended up winning the million dollars. So we had that, and then if you also notice that we had, uh, let's see, one, two, three, three more of my picks on there as well. So he had Odell Beckham, who I emailed out, Brandon Marshall, who I emailed out, and the Chiefs defense, which was my top defense uh, pick of the week. So I actually had five picks from the Millionaire Maker lineup, but unfortunately I didn't have uh, any of the two running backs. These were pretty much flyer picks at running back. We had Crowell, which was actually a good pick because San Francisco is not good against the run. I actually had lineups with Duke Johnson. I was thinking that uh, it would be a little bit of a back and forth game. Duke Johnson might get some carries and might also get some work in the uh, passing game. I guess I should have went with Crowell. He ended up putting up 31 points, so he was 0.3% owned, so that was a difference maker there. And then Eddie Lacy, I still wasn't big on either Green Bay running back because you just never know who they're going to play, who they're going to give the carries to but they actually ended up both getting a lot of touches and a lot of points this week. Lacey had 24.8 points. And then the final pick there was Julius Thomas, who I thought was a pretty good pick this week. I knew uh, Jacksonville would be in a high scoring game, or I thought they would anyways. And it ended up they ended up putting up 51 points. Julius Thomas uh, got a late, late touchdown, 16.4 uh, points. So that together, that scored 242 points, which was pretty much absolutely crazy this week. It was a lo pretty low scoring week, but this Millionaire Maker had uh, over 900,000 entries. So that was just like the nuts, the best lineup out there. Um, you couldn't do much better than that this week. So congrats to this guy and congrats to all you guys who used that Wilson Baldwin stack to make some money this week. If you've been following my YouTube channel for a bit or my emails, you know that this week I'm heading to the Fantasy Football World Championship put on by DraftKings. So it's a Thursday to Sunday event. I'll be leaving Friday morning, uh, flying out of Detroit, going to San Diego. We'll be staying there for three nights. They've got some cool stuff going on throughout the weekend. And then, of course, Sunday is the big tournament. 200 entries. Top 10 move on to LA for a chance at 5 million. Um, top 20 get at least 100,000. My goal is top 30. I think top 30 is 75,000 or more. So my goal is to get top 30 or higher, but either way, I'll be happy. Even if I get last, I'm winning 20,000 which is really awesome. Either way, I'll be happy with wherever I finish. I'm not really too stressed out about it, but I do need your help. I'll be researching a ton, of course. I'm gonna re be researching all week myself, but no matter how much I research, there's always things I'm gonna miss. So this is where I need your help. If you guys find any really interesting news pieces, stats, trends, or whatever you think I might uh, want to know going into this week, 
for week 15, leave them in the comments below. That way we can all share some, uh, some stats, some trends, any important news pieces or whatever, and we can all hopefully have a winning week 15. And maybe I'll use some of those stats, trends, news pieces uh, to help me construct a solid lineup for the Fantasy Football World Championship. So I'd really appreciate that. If you guys have anything that you think I should know this week, just let them, uh, just write it in the comments below. Okay, so this week I'm going to be doing my DraftKings picks a little different. I've got 20 picks here. I haven't done my full research for the week. I wanted to just get my top 20 players that I'm interested in, or players that I uh, like given their price this week before I get into my research. I don't want to do a full video and kind of give you guys my Fantasy Football World Championship lineup just in case there's people watching that are also in the contest. I don't want to really tip them off. So I'm going to go through 20 picks here. So first off is Tom Brady at 7,800. He's got a very easy matchup versus the Titans at home. He's thrown eight touchdowns in his last three games without all his weapons. Now he has Gronk back and maybe Edelman. Edelman practiced last week. It might be a stretch for him to get in there this week, but uh, he could have Edelman back as well. My only worry here with Tom Brady is it could be a blowout versus the Titans. He could either stop throwing the ball or maybe even get pulled in the second half. Next up is Blake Bortles at 6,100. He's going up against the Falcons team who got lit up by the Panthers this past week. The Falcons defense is struggling and Bortles has been a very consistent fantasy scorer. He's had 26 or more DraftKings points in three straight games. Blake Bortles got me to the Fantasy Football World Championship and I'll have him on my list to look at this week for sure. Matt Ryan at 5,700. So he's going up against Blake Bortles and the Jacksonville Jaguars. It should be a high scoring game. There's two below average defenses in that game. So I could see them going back and forth, throwing the ball quite a bit. Ryan should be low owned after a lot of poor results recently. He's still a good quarterback and could find himself in a shootout this week. So I don't know if I can stomach taking him for my fantasy football world championship lineup, but I think he's a good uh, quarterback to look at at 5,700 for the week. Then we've got Ryan Fitzpatrick playing Saturday night against Dallas. He's 5,400. You'll be able to use him in any contest that include the Saturday night game. He's got nine touchdowns his last three games and no interceptions, scoring 24 or more DraftKings points during that span. The Jets seem to be throwing a lot in the red zone. They're not really running the ball too much. Fitzpatrick has 25 touchdown passes on the season. He's a cheap price for a quarterback that's been putting up some big points, so I think he's worth a look this week. And then my last quarterback of the week here is Carson Palmer at 7,000. He's facing a below average Eagles defense on Sunday night. He's a top three quarterback this year, in my opinion, and the numbers pretty much prove that. He's behind only Tom Brady in yards and touchdown passes. He's got 31 touchdown passes on the season. He also has nine games with 300 or more yards for that three-point bonus at DraftKings. So Palmer is definitely a good quarterback this week. Okay, so moving on to the running backs, we've got Lamar Miller at 6,300. I had Miller picked before he had a great game last night on the Monday Night Football game. He had 20.9 DraftKings points on just 12 carries. So for some reason, they didn't use him much in the second half at all, and he still had 20.9 uh, DraftKings points. I'm not sure why he didn't get any carries, but he could have had a much bigger game. He's an elite talent. Uh, he's got high upside. He's put up over 33 DraftKings points twice this year, and he's always a threat to do it again. For the third week in a row, I'm going to go with David Johnson at 5,700. He should get lots of scoring opportunities playing on one of the league's best offenses. His first two games as a starter, he has 99 and 92 rushing yards. Last week, he also caught five passes and he got tackled at like the half yard line. So I think he's a really good play. He's still too cheap at 5,700. So I'll be taking a look at him this week. You got to also take a look at D'Angelo Williams at 6,600. The Steelers are one of the best offenses in the league. They are going against a top defense in the Broncos, but they are five point favorites. He's gotten 26 and 23 carries his last two games, plus seven receptions. And he's put up 23 or more DraftKings points in four of their last five games. So even at a bit higher price and going against a good defense, D'Angelo Williams is still a great pick this week. Okay, so on to some receivers. We've got Julio Jones at 8,500. He's going up against the Jaguars this week who don't have a shutdown corner like he faced last week against Carolina. He's coming off three games under 100 yards, but he does have 600 plus yard games this year. He will get a ton of targets as usual, and he should be able to turn those into DraftKings points. I think he might be a little lower owned after the last couple weeks, but uh, he's always a threat for a huge game. Next up, we got Allen Robinson at 7,600. He's one of Bortles favorite red zone targets. He has 12 touchdowns this year. He's hit the 100 yard bonus three times. His price has been rising. Uh, but he's always a threat for a huge game. So I don't know if I can afford to fit him in my lineups this week at 7,600, but he's definitely someone I want to try to get in going against the Falcons. 
Then we've got Alshon Jeffrey at 7,300. He's playing against the Vikings this week. Uh, he's played eight games this season and has a touchdown in four of those games. And he's also hit the 100 yard bonus in four games as well. He's an elite receiver and he's still a little too cheap at just 7,300. Demarius Thomas, 6,800. He's going up against the Steelers. Uh, the Steelers defense has been a bit better lately, but they can give up the big play. Last week, Thomas caught 10 passes for 95 yards. So it's a bit of a risky play here with Thomas. We never really know what he's going to do, but uh, he is capable of the big game and he might be worth the risk at just 6,800 this week. We got to take a look at Doug Baldwin again at 5,800. He's facing a bad Browns defense. I'm just hoping that the Seahawks don't go up by a ton early and stop throwing the ball. Uh, Baldwin's on a crazy streak of getting three, two, and three touchdowns over his last three games. He's gotten five, cat five or more catches in five straight games. He's only broke the 100 yard uh, mark once during that span and no more than six catches, but he's still getting into the end zone at a crazy rate. At the price, he's still a good play since he's getting the red zone looks, uh, you, but you're banking on him to at least score a touchdown, maybe two. Stefan Diggs is down to $4,000 at DraftKings this week. He's really fallen off after week eight, um, but he does have a decent matchup this week against the Bears. Through uh, week six to eight, he put up 22, 26, and 21 DraftKings point games, but he hasn't done much at all since. We do know that he does have that upside though, and for a number one receiver, he's a pretty cheap price, so might take a flyer on Diggs this week. Moving on to tight ends, we've got Julius Thomas at 4,700. He has a touchdown in four straight games. He also has five or more catches in three of the last four games, with one of those games where he had 116 yards, and he also showed some upside earlier in the season with a seven catch, 78 yard, and a touchdown game. So he does have some upside, 4,700 is a pretty good price, and I think they'll be in a high scoring game this week. Next up, we gotta take a look at Gronk at 7,700. He looked healthy last week, although his snaps were a bit limited in the first half. He played for the most part of the second half. He caught four passes for 87 yards and a touchdown. He's hit 100 yards five times this year, which is pretty crazy for a tight end. It's going to be very tough to fit him in a lineup this week at 7,700, but you got to take a look at him, see if you can squeeze him in a couple lineups. And my last tight end is Jacob Tammy at 3,300. There's not many cheap tight ends I like this week, so this is a bit of a flyer pick, but I wanted to include a cheaper tight end in the video. I might take a shot with Tammy. Matt Ryan doesn't have many targets besides Julio, and Tammy has shown upside. He had a game earlier in the season where he had 10 catches and 103 yards. So he's only got one touchdown on the season, but uh, the upside with the targets is there. So I might take a flyer on Tammy this week at 3,300. Two defenses I like. We'll start with the Steelers at 2,700. The Broncos haven't been doing too well in offense lately, ranking near the bottom of the league in yards per play as of late. They do have an implied team total under 20 points this week, so that's a good sign for the Steelers D. And the Steelers D is averaging 11.3 drafting points at home this year. And then my second defense is the Jets at 3,300. They're playing Saturday night, so you have to be playing the Saturday contest to get the Jets in. Uh, the Jets are going against a Cowboys team who has scored 14, 19, and 7 points over their last three games. The Jets have three or more sacks in three straight games and an interception in each of those games as well. And they rank third in opponents' yards per play this year. So if you're entering the Saturday contest, I really like the Jets as a defense this week. All right, guys, so that's it for my week 15 video. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking the thumbs up button on YouTube so I know to keep making them. As long as we can get over a thousand thumbs up again this week, I'll make one for week 16. And if you don't already have my free lineup generator tool, make sure you get that for free by clicking on the link in the YouTube description below. That's absolutely free and you'll also get my email updates with extra picks as well. All right, guys, so as always, good luck with your contest this week. Wish me luck at the Fantasy Football World Championship. And also make sure if you have any news or notes or stats or trends or anything, leave them in the comment section below. I hope you guys make some money this week. Let's have a great week 15. Cheers.